Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for the kind introduction, future customs broker Nina. I am delighted to give this lecture upon the kind invitation of the Philippine Christian University, headed by the chairperson of the Customs Administration Department, Professor Jim C. Wakawili, LCB, REB, MCA, and the Philippine Society of Customs Administration Students, PCU Chapter, President future customs broker, Jay Paz, and VP External Affairs, future customs broker, Jerome Sanchez. Thank you for this opportunity, and I hope that this will not be the first and definitely not the last activity that we would have together. I also want to greet all the 417 participants joining us this afternoon, and some of my colleagues at the Bureau of Customs, we have here Sir Clinton, yung iba siguro mamaya makikita ko and I would, I would acknowledge their presence. So again, magandang hapon ho sa ating lahat. Good afternoon, maayong hapon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This afternoon, I'll be talking about the topic on advanced ruling on tariff classification, customs valuation, and rules of origin. So, na meron na tayong 425 participants. At the end of this session, we all aim to know the following. Number one, the concept and the essence of advanced ruling. Bakit ba merong advanced ruling? Para saan ba tong advanced ruling? Is this a new provision under the customs laws? Is this a new subject? Or is this a new trend in international customs administration? Next would be to know the implementing rules and regulations on advance ruling, the conditions and procedures for the application of advance ruling, and the remedies available for importers and exporters in case that the advance ruling or the ruling issued by the Tariff Commission or the Bureau of Customs is adverse to their interest. Before we proceed with the discussion proper, maybe some of us here are preparing for the licensure examination this coming November 2023 or are on their fourth year standing and will take the board examination in 2024. So let's see first the syllabus, the subject items or the important items that will be covered in the subject customs laws rules and regulations, ethics, and customs broker practices. I suggest that as early as now, for those who are still in the first year, second year, and third year, you have to know the syllabus so that you would have the bird's eye view of what topics will be included in this subject and so that you would know what topics to highlight in your studies. The Customs law subject is broken down into three parts. The first part talks about the essentials of customs administration. That comprises 40% of this subject. And this include the general and common provisions, particularly makikita nyo ito sa chapter 1 and chapter 2. Ano, title 1 and title 2. Title 1, title 2, title 3, title 15, title 17, and title 18 of your Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. The second part would be the administrative and judicial proceedings. That comprises another 40%. At ang topics na ito makikita nyo, majority are in Title 11 and Title 14 of the CMTA. So yung advanced ruling falls under this subtopic. Okay? In particular, nasa number one siya advance ruling. And the third part that comprises the remaining 20% is all about the ethics and practices of the customs broker profession. We have here the Customs Brokers Act of 2004 as amended by Republic Act number 9853, the Code of Ethics and Code of Technical Standards, BIR, BOC, and other issuances affecting the customs broker profession the CPD law and its related issuances. So may nag-chat na dito. Oh, 
Thank you, Sir Clinton, for joining us this afternoon. So whenever I talk to my students about advanced ruling, their first question would be always this. Sir, bakit po ba may advanced ruling? Ano po ba ang significance ng advanced ruling? Is this something new? Well, this is a provision introduced by the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. And we all know that the CMTA was a commitment of the Philippines to the revised Kyoto Convention. So this, was, this law was passed in response to the revised Kyoto Convention. Sige nga, let's have a participant from the audience who would like to answer the question on when did the CMTA take effect? Kailan ba naging effective yung customs modernization and tariff? And you know what? This question is almost as always asked. This is usually asked in the, C, uh, in the customs broker licensure examination. So let's see if your answers are correct. Okay. Majority. Okay. Almost all of those who shared their answers got the correct date. The CMTA took effect on June 16, 2016. So, sir, ano ba yung batas na ini-implement ng Bureau of Customs prior to June 16, 2016? Let's say, for example, on June 1, 2016, what law was implemented or what law was prevailing then? What law? Anong tawag sa batas na yun prior to June 16, 2016? Do you know what law? Correct. May sumagot dito, Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines, TCCP. Noong nag-aaral pa ako ng Customs Administration in college, ang batas na binabasa namin was then the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. Sa TCCP, wala pa hong advance ruling. Ang advance ruling lang po ay lumabas or it was brought into the picture when the CMTA took it. Because this is one of the uh, innovations introduced by, by the revised Kyoto Convention. So, going back to the question, ano ba ang relevance or significance ng advanced ruling? We'll answer that through this problem or through this situation. Let us say, for example, there is a client, an importer who recently imported 20 by 20 containers. So, ibig sabihin, 20 containers na ang size niya is 20 footer. So, 20 by 20 footer containers. And this shipment involves meat products. So, ang ini-import ni importer ay meat products. The shipment arrived on June 3, 2023 at the Port of Manila. And then the customs broker filed the entry on June 6, 2023. However, there was a dispute on the proper tariff classification. So sabi ni customs broker, ito yung tariff classification niya. Let us say, for example, 11, 11, 11, 11, kasi 8 digit niyan, di ba? So 11, 11, 11, 11. And then sabi ni customs examiner, no, it should be 12, 12, 12, 12. So there was a dispute on which is the proper tariff classification. And because of that dispute, nagka-delay yung process ng goods declaration. Then on June 11, diba usually yung free storage period, five days lang yan. Paglagpas ng five days, magsisimula ka ng magbayad or si importer magsisimula ng magbayad ng storage charges. So the client started to pay the storage charges at 1,000 pesos per container per day. Ilang containers nga meron sa problem na to? There are 20 containers. So if, nag, if magbabayad si importer ng 1,000 pesos per container per day times 20 containers, that would be 20,000 per day. Bawat araw na nakatenga yung containers sa port, nagbabayad si importer ng 20,000 pesos. The dispute on tariff classification was finally settled 
on June 30, 2023. Let us say, nag-avail ng dispute settlement remedy, dispute settlement process, si importer. And then, nasettle siya on June 30, 2023. The broker immediately processed the or continued the processing of the goods declaration and the containers were released on July 2, 2023. Nung nagpunta na si broker sa port operator nung July 2, 2023, ang billing na was already 600,000 pesos. Okay. So if we'll take this situation Magkano yung additional cost na na-incur ni importer? Magkano? 600,000 pesos. Kung wala, dis kung wala pa sigurong dispute sa tariff classification, mas maagang na release ni customs broker. Mas maagang natapos yung clearing ng goods sa Bureau of Customs. Kung mas maagang natapos, mas maikli lang yung number of days na nakatenga yung containers sa pier. Kung mas maikli yung days, then mas maikli sana or mas maliit yung babayaran yang storage charges. So imagine, because of the dispute, the importer incurred additional cost of 600,000 pesos. Pwede na sana yung pang bonus sa kanyang mga empleyado. Pwede na sana yung pang outing para sa kanyang mga employees. Pwede na sana yung maging bonus kay customs broker because of the efficient service. But because of the tariff dispute, the dispute on the tariff classification, na sayang ang 600,000 pesos ni importer. So that, if there was an advance ruling on the proper tariff classification applied by the importer, then hindi sana siya makakagastos ng 600,000 pesos. That is the financial significance or relevance of an advance ruling. Kapag nag-avail tayo ng advance ruling, we would not incur unnecessary costs. So, ano yung advance ruling, sir? What shall we do in order not to incur these unnecessary expenses? Yan yung pag-uusapan natin this afternoon. If you read your Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, di ba? This law is divided into 18 titles. It starts with Title 1, diba? Title 2, hanggang Title 18. And if you read this law against the other laws, kung mapapansin nyo, yung Customs Brokers Act of 2004, yung RA 9280, anong section siya nagsisimula? Anong section nagsimul nagsisimula yung RA 9280? Sige nga, can anyone tell me? What section does it start? RA 9280, huh? RA Not CMTA. I'm not asking about CMTA. 100. 100. No, I'm not asking about CMTA. I'm asking about RA 9280. Section RA 9280. Okay. Yung RA 9280 starts with section 1. Okay, tama. Section 1. That is, in fact, the short title. Yung Customs Brokers Act of 2004. Yung CMTA, anong section nagsisimula? Does it start with section 1? 100. Okay, section 100. Yan yung pagiging unique ng CMTA. Hindi kagaya ng ibang batas na pinasa ng ating Congress, nagsisimula sila ng section 1. But yung CMTA nagsisimula in section 100. And that goes the same with the predecessor, yung dating Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. It starts with section 100. So title 1, Section 100. Napansin siguro ninyo yan, di ba? Title 1, Section 100. Hanggang anong section yung Title 1? Hanggang section? Anong section? Sige nga. Can you recall? Anong? Tarek. Section 121. Section 121 and 120 talk about relief consignment, di ba? After Section 121, naging Section 122 ba? Hindi, di ba? After Section 121, to, uh, pumunta siya kay Section 200, under Title 2. Tapos, under Title 3, Section 300. So, every title starts with 100. So, Title 1, 100. Title 2, 200. For, ad for advanced ruling, this topic falls under 
what title of the CMTA. Sige nga, if you're familiar with your CMTA, I would suggest, I would suggest okay. you get to be familiar with the table of contents. Ano yung mga sections, titles ng CMTA? Because that would help you that would help you that would help you in your studies. That would help you in, in your study of the CMTA. Mas madali nyong maalala yung mga sections ng CMTA if you study, if you read first and get familiar with the titles of the CMTA. So tama kayo. It starts with, it's, it falls under Title 11, yung Administrative and Judicial Procedures. Yung Title 11 na uh, merong Chapter 1, di ba? Chapter 1 talks about the yung kaninang nakita nyo, advance ruling and dispute settlement. Okay, advance ruling and dispute settlement. Under chapter 1, ilang sections meron? Anim na sections. Section 1100 on classification, 1101 valuation, 1102 rules of origin, 1103 the conditions and application and effects, 1104 the remedy of appeal, and 11.05 on the implementing rules and regulations. Anim na sections lang yung dispute settlement or I mean yung advanced ruling and dispute settlement na chapter. At medyo maikli yan. It does not provide, the, five, the six sections do not provide everything that the importer, that the exporter has to go through. And dahil maikli siya, the commissioner and the tariff commission exercise their delegated rulemaking power under Section 1105. Ano yung nakasaad sa Section 1105? The Secretary of Finance, upon the recommendation of the Bureau, so this refers to the Bureau of Customs, and the Commission, referring to the Tariff Commission, shall promulgate rules and regulations to implement the preceding provisions. Ibig sabihin ng preceding provisions, yung provision prior to 1105. So yung 1100 hanggang 1104 on advance ruling. And in the exercise of this power, kaya nakapag-issue si Tariff Commission ng Tariff Commission Order number 2017-01 which talks about advance ruling on tariff classification and si Bureau of Customs, yung Customs Administrative Order number 3-2016 as implemented by Customs Memorandum Order number 30 2016. Whenever we hear the words customs administrative order, customs memorandum order, ang usual na tinatanong sa akin ng ating mga students, Sir, ano po ba yung pag pinagkaiba ng CAO sa CMO? Ano yung pagkaiba ng CAO at ng CMO? Can anyone share to us? Ano ba yung intindi nyo sa difference between the CAO and the the CMO. Yung Customs Administrative Order po ay approved or signed by both the Commissioner of Customs and the Secretary of Finance. Okay, so kung titingnan nyo yung mga kao, pirmado yan ni Commissioner at ni Secretary of Finance. Yung CMO naman on the other hand, si Commissioner of Customs lang yung pumitirma. Mm -hmm. And basically po, you, yes, yes, that's correct, Gio. So, yung CMO is signed by the Commissioner of Customs only. Bakit si Commissioner of Customs lang? Kasi usually, yung CMO po would be the internal okay, internal guidelines for the employees of the Bureau of Customs. Diba usually, may kapartner yan. Yung cow, tapos may kapartner siya na CMO. In this case, yung CAO on advance ruling is CAO 3-2016. Yung kapartner naman niya is CMO number 30-2016. Yung CMO 30-2016, ini-implement niya yung CAO 3-2016. Very good. You know the difference between a CAO or the Customs Administrative Order or the CAO and the CMO or the Customs Memorandum Order. So let's proceed to the next the next slide so let's discuss the advanced ruling on tariff classification so as mentioned earlier the advanced ruling on tariff classification 
was implemented through Tariff Commission Order Number 2017-01 or the Procedure on the Application for Advanced Ruling on Tariff Classification Related to the Importation or Exportation of Goods. This was approved and issued by the Tariff Commission in October of 2018. So yan yung first page sa harap ninyo ngayon nakikita on the right side of the screen is the first page of the actual Commission Order number 2017-01. We are now 454 participants in the room. So thank you very much for all those who are joining us this afternoon. Ano yung scope nitong Commission Order number 2017-01? According to Section 1, the Tariff Commission Order number 2017-01 provides for the procedure on the application for advanced ruling on tariff classification. We would know in this particular commission order kung sino yung pwedeng mag-apply for tariff uh, for advanced ruling. Ano yung mga requirements na isasubmit? Kailan siya isasubmit? Kail ilang araw ba magde-decide si tariff commission? Everything that we need to know about advanced ruling is found as far as tariff classification ruling is concerned is in Commission Order number 2017-01. So pag-iisahin natin yung mga important provisions ng Commission Order number 2017-01. So first, the objectives of the order. One, to add certainty and predictability to international trade. So tatanungin nyo ako, Sir, bakit nagiging certain or predictable yung international trade because advanced ruling? Okay. Katulad ng pinakita nating situation kanina, di ba na, nadagdagan ng unnecessary cost or unnecessary expense si importer ng 600,000 pesos because of the dispute on the tariff classification? So kung nag-avail lang sana siya ng advance ruling, then hindi na sana siya mag-i-incur mag, uh, ng additional cost na 600,000 pesos. You know, as business persons, our importers and exporters have already calculated how much they would sell their products, how much profit they would earn. Okay? So, kapag alam na nila na ito talaga yung tariff classification ng kanilang shipment, and this is the rate of duty applicable to their shipment, then they would readily know how much to spend, how much to allocate as cost of the goods, or the margin of profit. And through advanced ruling, magiging certain and predictable yung kanilang expenses. So that's how advanced ruling adds certainty and predictability to international trade. Next, it helps importers and exporters make informed decisions based on legally binding rules. Bakit siya nagiging O bakit siya makakatulong sa mga importers or exporters? Because meron silang pagbabasehang decision kapag i-question sila ni Bureau of Customs ng kanilang tariff classification. Because if, if customs ask, oh, we don't agree with this tariff classification, ito yung dapat niyang tariff classification. So the importer or the exporters having the advanced ruling has the legal basis to assert that this is the proper classification on their shipment. Diba? Hindi pwedeng sila-sila lang yung nagsasabi na ganito yung, yung tariff classification. Maganda talaga kapag meron kang papel, meron kang document, meron kang official document that supports your claim for tariff classification. And then, this establishes the system which is in line with the revised Kyoto Convention, the World Trade Organization, and the Agreement of Trade in Gua. Uh, Okay, the atiga. Ito yung, ito yung basis natin kung bakit merong advance ruling. As I've mentioned earlier, the CMTA was a commitment of the Philippines to the revised Kyoto Convention. Kaya marami pong mga bagong provisions sa CMTA na nakaangkla sa revised Kyoto Convention. And then World Trade Organization because we espouse the idea of freer movement of goods, of 
not giving unnecessary hindrances to the movement of goods around the world. And of course, yung commitment natin under the ASEAN uh, Trade in Goods Agreement. And lastly, by having the advanced ruling, we can assure the support of our importers and exporters in complying with customs rules and regulations. Kasi alam nila that if they comply, they would get benefits. If they comply, they, that would make the release of their shipment more efficient, more effective, and in a shorter period of time. Kaya nga kami sa Bureau of Customs, we are really enticing our importers, our exporters to join the Authorized Economic Operator Program. Diba? Because if they give benefits to law-abiding citizens, diba? kapag sumusunod ka sa batas, nabibigyan ka ng certain privileges, that would encourage you to comply more with our customs rules and regulations. There are certain terms that we would encounter as we read the Tariff Commission Order or as we discuss the Tariff Commission Order. So let's get to know them one by one. Okay. First, lagi natin pinag-uusapan na to for the last 30 minutes. Ano ba yung advance ruling? What is advance ruling? Now, the Commission Order defines the advance ruling as an official written decision. Bakit siya official? Because it has a bearing. Pwede mo siyang gamitin as basis whenever you do certain actions as far as clearing of your goods and the tariff classification of your goods are concerned. It is in writing kasi hindi naman siya verbal. Okay? It's not a verbal decision. It is a written decision. And what makes it official? Because it is issued by the appropriate authority. Now, as far as the CMT is concerned, yung meron pong authority to decide on what is the tariff classification or the proper tariff classification of the goods, nandyan ho yan sa tariff commission. Okay. And this official written decision provides the appropriate tariff classification of the goods. If, I, if you have time, I suggest that you visit the website of the Bureau of Customs or of the Tariff Commission. Makikita nyo doon yung mga advance rulings that the Tariff Commission has issued when it comes to tariff classification of the goods. And the word advance, okay, ba anong relevance ng word na advance? It means that the ruling is issued prior to the importation or exportation. Kaya nga later on you would know there is a specific time frame within which you can apply for advance ruling. Kapag lumagpas na doon, you're no longer allowed to file for an advance ruling. Who can apply? Sino ba yung pwedeng mag-apply for advance ruling? According to the commission order, a natural or juridical person. Ano ba yung natural person, sir? Katulad ko, katulad ninyo. Tayong lahat, we are natural persons. May mata, may ilong, may bibig, may tenga, di ba? Gwapo, magaganda. So tayo ay natural person. Ano naman yung juridical person? These are persons given personality by the law. Anong example niyan? Corporation. Di ba? Yung corporation, for example, yung, yung mga shopping malls. Like for example, yung SM. SM Holdings Corporation is a corporation. Walang yung mata, walang bibig, walang tenga, walang ilong. But nakakapagnegosyo. Why? Because the law gives that entity a juridical personality. So pwede natural person, kayo, tayo, kung mag import tayo, mag export tayo, then we can apply with the Tariff Commission. Yung ating pong mga juridical persons, corporations, partnerships, cooperatives, they could also apply for advance ruling. As long as they are engaged in the importation of the goods or in the exportation of the goods. Or kung hindi available yung mismong tao, then we could ask someone to be the representative. So meron 
pwedeng authorized representative. But take note, pag sinabi nating authorized, there should be a document proving the authority. And how is that authority proven? What do you submit in order for you to be to be to be said na authorized kayo by either a special power of attorney or kung natural person then special power of attorney or if a juridical person such as a corporation there should be a board resolution authorizing Mr. A or Mr. X to represent the corporation. Bakit to kailangan ng board resolution? So that we would know that that person is lawfully authorized by the corporation to transact on behalf of the corporation. Okay. What are the conditions? Diba binanggit natin kanina, there are certain things that you need to comply. What are these conditions para makapag-avail ng advance ruling? Number one, your application must only involve one type of product. So let us say, for example, you plan to import, okay, you plan to import a pencil that gives you the correct answer. So kahit anong exam, kapag gamitin mo yung lapis na yon, it will give you a correct answer. Okay, you have a pencil. And then naisip mo rin, hindi naman lahat nagagamit ng pencil, meron din gumagamit ng ballpen. So gusto mo rin import ng ballpen na kapag ginamit mo, sasagot niya, sasagutin niya lahat ng exams mo. Okay? And then you get a perfect score. So you have a pencil and a ballpen. If you wish to apply for advance ruling for these two, uh, two products, you have to file separate application. Kasi nga, yung condition is that one application, one type of product. So a separate application for pencil and then another application for the ballpen. Okay, time element. Ito yung binanggit ko kanina na merong time frame. You should file your application at least 90 days. So kapag sinabi natin at least 90 days, 90 days or more prior to your importation or export. So most likely, three months before your importation or exportation. So sir, paano kung mag-import, mag-apply ako ngayon and then I would import after two weeks, pwede pa rin ba yung advance ruling? What do you think? Pwede pa ba? You apply now and then you're expecting your shipment to arrive two to three weeks from now? The answer is no. Why? Kasi nga requirement sa batas that you should apply 90 days or more. So in case dumating na yung shipment mo, then advance ruling could no longer be applicable. Anong mangyayari? That would now be a dispute ruling. Okay? Next, what are the procedures? Alam nyo na yung requirements. You, uh, the requirement, the conditions are that, number one, it should only cover one product or commodity. The application must be filed at least 90 days. That means 90 days or more prior to importation or exportation. Alam nyo na yung period. Alam nyo na yung conditions. What's next? The procedures. So what are the procedures? What's the first step to do? The submission of the application form. So there's an application form I'll show you later on. Merong application form that you can download at the Tariff Commission website. You submit the application form in three copies. So, dapat tatlong kopya, ha? Sir, pwede na ba yung isa? Hindi. Pwede ba yung dalawa? Hindi. Tatlo nga yung hinihingi. So, you have to comply with three copies. If you only submit two, then that will not be accepted. You have to strictly follow. Kapag sinabing tatlo, then three copies. Together with the application form, you include your supporting documents. Ano ba yung mga tas, ano ba yung mga considered na supporting documents? For example, if you have a picture of the product, then you include the picture. If you have a brochure of the product, you include the brochure. If you have the technical description, then you include the technical description. Kung may kulay, kung meron siyang um, size or measurement, then you include that in your supporting documents. 
when you submit your application with the Tariff Commission, i-assess ng Tariff Commission if nag-comply ka ba. So una, your your application only involves one type of commodity. Second, nakapag-file ka at least 90 days or more prior to the importation or exportation. Next, titingnan nila if tatlong copies ba. First copy, second copy, third copy. And then kung meron ka ba supporting documents. If the Tariff Commission believes that or finds your application to be in order, ibig sabihin, kompleto, you comply with the requirements, tatlong kopya, prior to the importation, 90 days or more, then they will assess your application. So assessment would mean magbabayad ka ng filing fee. How much is the filing fee? Sa Tariff Commission po, 510 pesos yung filing fee. Kapag nagbayad na kayo, tapos na kayo magbayad, then you will be assigned an application number. So that is a unique application number. Wala ho pa hong magkahan, magkapareho ng application number. Each application has a separate number from the others. Okay? So yan yung procedures. You submit your requirements, let, let the Tariff Commission assess your requirements, pay the filing fee, and then once accepted, you will be given your application number. So ano yung itsura ng application form? Ito yung application form. So you have the details. Sino yung pangalan ng applicant? Ano yung address niya? Ano yung taxpayer identification number? Contact details. And then sino yung contact person? Contact details niya. Yung details ng goods. Ano yung name ng produkto? So pencil. Okay. Ano yung brand or model number? If meron, the Name of the manufacturer, the country of origin, the expected date of importation or exportation. Sir, bakit kailangan yung expected date? Kasi nga, one of the requirements or one of the conditions is that the application must be filed at least 90 days prior to the importation or exportation. Then yung brief description. Bakit kailangan ng brief description? Di ba if nakita nyo yung AHTN, pag buklat nyo ng AHTN, napakaraming numbers dyan. And then there's a specific description. So when you write your description here, yan yung magiging basis ni Tariff Commission para tingnan niya rin kung ano yung magfi-fit na tariff plus uh, na classification heading para sa shipment mo. Di ba we have the rules on the interpretation of the harmonized system, yung general rules on the interpretation, rule 1, rule 2, rule 2A, 2B, di ba? Meron yan. So susundan yan ng Tariff Commission in order to arrive with the proper tariff classification of the goods. And then, merong tanong dyan, would it require a sample? Gusto niya makita ni Tariff Commission yung ballpen mo na sasagot ng tamang, uh, bibigay sa'yo ng tamang sagot. So, make a sample, submit a sample. And then, ano yung mga supporting documents ninyo? So, iti-check yan ni Tariff Commission. And then, you sign your certification or your undertaking that all the information that you wrote in your application are to the best of your knowledge and belief true and correct. So that's the tariff classification or the advanced ruling on tariff classification form. So what's next? Once nakapag submit ka na sa tariff commission, what will happen? According to the commission order, the tariff commission will acknowledge the receipt of your application. So sa tatakatak nila ng acknowledgement yung inyong form. Kaya nga meron kayong unique number because that means your application has been duly received by the Tariff Commission. And if the Tariff Commission feels that there's a need for additional information, you will be notified. Kaya nga, kinihingan ka ng contact details so that you will be contacted by the Tariff Commission in case kailangan pa nila ng additional information. If gusto nila ng on-site verification, kung gusto nilang pupuntahan yung lugar ninyo, then they could also ask for an on-site verification. So in notifying you for the need of additional information or on-site verification, you will be given a specific period of time to comply with the requirements. And under the commission order, you have 10 days from receipt of the notice to either submit the additional information or to allow the conduct of the on-site verification. Okay. So, pwede din ba hindi tanggapin ni Tariff Commission yung inyong application. 
Yes. Ano yung grounds? Number one, when your application form is not in the prescribed, hindi yung ginamit niyo yung application form kanina dahil gusto niyong gumawa ng sarili niyong form. So, you will be denied outright by the tariff commission. Next, insufficient information or documents. You did not indicate the description of the goods. How will the tariff commission assess your goods kung hindi mo naman properly described? Or wala kang inattach na picture, wala kang inattach na brochure, wala kang inattach na any other document to support your application. Then the tariff commission will deny or will not accept your application. Okay? Binibigyan mo lang sila ng sakit ng ulo. Or, hindi ka nag-comply ng requirement na dapat one application, one type of commodity. Isang application, sampung goods yung inilagay mo. Then, the Tariff Commission will not accept your application. Or, late ka na nag-file. Diba, requirement natin kanina, it should be filed at least 90 days or more. Nag-file ka, two weeks na lang. So, the Tariff Commission may not accept your application. And lastly, gusto mo mag-avail ng service pero hindi ka naman nagbayad ng filing fee. That would also be a ground for non-acceptance. Take note that this provision, okay, itong provision on advance ruling, merong mga requirements. And as an applicant, you have to strictly comply with these requirements. Otherwise, you may not be able to avail of this advance ruling provision. So, tinanggap ng Tariff Commission, pero pwede pa rin bang itinay ng Tariff Commission? Kasi baka awayin niyo yung Tariff Commission. Oh, si, uh, tinanggap niyo naman, tapos ngayon, hindi i-deny nyo, uh, nyo lang din pala. So, pwede ba? Pwede bang i-deny ni Tariff Commission yung inyong application? Yes. Okay, yes. When you fail to provide additional information. Diba kanina, binanggit natin that you, you submit it to the Tariff Commission. And then, once assessed, magbayad ka ng filing fee. Binanggit din natin kanina na if kailangan pa ni Tariff Commission ng additional information, you will be notified. Either email or tatawagan ka or susulatan ka. And you are given 10 days from receipt of the notice to comply with the additional information. But you did not comply. So that's a ground for denial. Next, you were notified that the Tariff Commission will conduct on-site verification. Pero hindi mo naman sinagot yung Tariff Commission. That's also a ground for denial. So bakit dinideny nila? Kasi nga, they could not properly assess your goods because you failed to comply with providing additional information or allowing on-site verification. Next, yung application mo, meron na palang pending court litigation. Subject na pala siya to administrative review or appeal. So, bakit i-deny? Because there might be a conflict. Like, for example, if pending na yung case mo, nasa court of tax appeals. Okay? Meron ng pending case sa court of tax appeals. And then, Magro-rule din yung Tariff Commission. What if mag-conflict yung decision ni Court of Tax Appeals tsaka ni Tariff Commission? That would that would also create another problem, di ba? Sino masusunod? Court of Tax Appeals or Tariff Commission? So in order to erase the possibility of any conflicting decisions, kapag meron ng court litigation or pending na sa korte or subject to administrative review or appeal, the Tariff Commission will not issue a ruling in deference to the court or to the administrative office that has already acquired jurisdiction over the matter. Next, if there is misrepresentation, kapag merong pagsisinungaling, okay, meron kayong diniklare na information doon at napatunayan or nalaman ni Tariff Commission that it is not true, then that would also be a ground for denial. Why? Because nagsinungaling ka nga sa application mo, then the decision of the Tariff Commission may not also be reflective of the proper facts that you mentioned. Diba? So kung merong pagsisinungaling, syempre, yung decision niya would be based on 
false statements. That's why the Tariff Commission may deny your application for advance ruling. But you don't have to worry because if the, if ever the Tariff Commission denies your application, you will be properly notified in writing para pwede nyo ring sagutin yung Tariff Commission sa kanilang denial. Okay, there's a question here. An applicant for an advance ruling decided to withdraw the application by just calling the Tariff Commission. So tumawag sa Tariff Commission, sabi niya, oh, Tariff Commission, meron akong application dyan for advance ruling. Hindi ko na itutuloy. Can the, can the applicant do that? Do you think the withdrawal is proper by just calling the Tariff Commission? Yes or no? What do you think? The answer is no. Why? Diba? Your application was in writing. So if ever you withdraw your application, it should also be in writing. That is found in section 4.8 of Tariff Commission Order number 2017-01. And if ever you decide to withdraw, the withdrawal must be made before the issuance of an advance ruling. Sir, bakit hindi pwedeng mag-withdraw kapag nag-issue na? Eh, what is there to withdraw? Eh, nakapag-issue na yung tariff commission, di ba? Katulad na lang nung, if ever, di ba? You all know that under the CMTA, you have a period of 15 days to file your goods declaration. And that 15-day period is subject to extension. Pwede naman yung mag-extend. Basta nag-request kayo prior to the expiration of the original 15-day period. Eh, nag-apply kayo, nag-expire na yung 15 days. What is there to extend? Eh, kung natapos na yung 15 days, di ba? So, katulad din yan dito. What is there to withdraw if the advance ruling has already been issued? So, you have to make sure that if ever you withdraw, you withdraw it in writing and you withdraw it prior to the issuance of the advance ruling. Kailan ba mag issue si Tariff Commission ng advance ruling? Under the Tariff Commission order, the Tariff Commission will issue the order within 30 days. Saan magka-count yung 30 days? From receipt of the application. Noong time na nag-file kayo ng application nyo, the 30 days will start to count. Or kapag tinawagan kayo ni Tariff Commission or nag-notify si Tariff Commission sa inyo na kailangan niya ng additional information, then from the time that you submit the additional documents. Then, kapag nakapag-issue na si Tariff Commission, sino ba yung bibigyan niya ng kopya ng kanyang ruling? Of course, the applicant, kasi siya yung nag-apply. Who else? The Bureau of Customs will also be given a copy. Why? Diba? Kapag, nag -file, kapag nag gusto mo i-clear yung shipment mo, you file it with the Bureau of Customs. So, bibigyan ng copy si Bureau of Customs ng Tariff Commission ruling. The third person is the Secretary of Finance. Bakit bibigyan sa Secretary of Finance? Because there is a remedy that the importer or the Bureau of Customs may avail to question the advance ruling. And that person who has to decide is the Secretary of Finance. So those are the three persons who will be furnished with a copy of the Tariff Commission ruling. The applicant, kasi siya yung nag-apply, siya yung interested party, Pangalawa, yung Bureau of Customs kasi yung Bureau of Customs naman yung mag-clear ng goods, yung mag a ng goods. And thirdly, the Secretary of Finance. So there's a question here. The importer filed his application on April 11. So April 11, nag-file siya ng application niya. Tinawagan siya ni Tariff Commission. Kailangan mag-submit ng additional documents. So, tinawagan siya or nag-notify yung Tariff Commission on April 13. And then, nag-submit si, si applicant on April 23. So, question, when is the advance ruling due for issuance? To rephrase the question, kailan ba magsisimula yung 30 days? Kailan magsisimula mag-count yung 30 days? Sa April 11, kung saan nag-file ng application si importer? Or sa April 13, kung kailan tumawag si Tariff Commission? Or sa April 23, kung kailan nag-submit 
si applicant. Okay, so the answer is you start to count on April 23, the day that you submit your additional information. So that means the advance ruling is due for issue once. Okay, so malito, this should be May 23, okay? Should be May 23, which is within 30 days from the submission of all documents. So may kulang dyan, two. That should be May 23. So tama kayo, May 23, you start to count on April 23. That is the day that you submitted your additional documents. We mentioned in the objectives kanina that the advance ruling will add certainty or predictability in international trade. And that would give the importer or the exporter informed decision based on the law. Ano ba yung effect ng advance ruling? According to the CMTA, it is binding upon the Bureau of Customs. So anong ibig sabihin ng word na binding upon the Bureau of Customs? For example, merong shipments importer A. Nag-classify siya sa goods niya under heading 1990-1990-1990. Uh, okay, sabi ni Bureau of Customs, no, hindi ito. Dapat i-classify mo under 80-80-80-80 na ang tariff heading niya, ang uh, tariff rate niya is 10%. Tapos sina sinagot ni importer, Sir, with all due respect po, yung akin pong tariff classification is based on an advance ruling issued by the Tariff Commission. Tapos pwede bang sabihin ni examiner, iba si Tariff Commission, iba si Bureau of Customs. Kung gusto mo mag-process ng goods mo, susundin mo si Bureau of Customs. Ito yung proper tariff classification. Can the customs examiner say that? Or the, can the customs examiner do that? Yes or no? What do you think? Why no? Why do you say no? Why? Bakit nagsabi ng yes? Sige nga, can you answer why you answered no? Can you state your reason of saying no? It is no because the customs examiner cannot do that because the CMTA expressly provides that the advance ruling issued by the Tariff Commission is binding upon the Bureau. Ibig sabihin, susundin yan ni Bureau of Customs. So, paano, paano kung ayaw ni Bureau of Customs? Ano bang remedy na available kay Bureau of Customs? If the Bureau of Customs believes that the ruling is adverse to the interest of the Bureau of Customs, then pwede siyang umakyat kay Secretary of Finance. Kaya nga kanina, isa sa taong bibigyan ng kopya ng advance ruling, si Secretary of Finance. Because the Secretary of Finance can review Okay, the Secretary of Finance can review the decision of the Tariff Commission in case the Bureau of Customs feels aggrieved of the decision. Bakit, sir? Bakit mag a yung Bureau of Customs? Diba? For example, sa situation natin kanina, ang sabi ni Tariff Commission, ito yung tariff classification. Yung rate of duty, zero. Sabi ni Bureau of Customs, hindi. Ito yung dapat na tariff classification niya. Ang rate of duty niya, 10%. Bakit adverse kay Bureau of Customs? Of course, kung ito yung susundin, merong customs duty na babayaran si importer kasi subject sa to 10%. For example, 1 million dutiable value. Eh kung yung rate of duty is 10%, may makakolekta si Bureau of Customs na 100,000. Pero kung susundin natin yung sa Tariff Commission, 0% rate of duty, walang masisigil si Bureau of Customs na customs duty. So aggrieve si Bureau of Customs. If that happens, then the Bureau of Customs can elevate to the Secretary of Finance and ask the Secretary of Finance to overrule the Tariff Commission. Ilang araw ba meron si Bureau of Customs? Five days from receipt of the advance ruling by the Tariff Commission. And kapag nasa level na ni Secretary of Finance, natanggap ni Bureau of Customs June 1. So the Bureau of Customs has until June 6. Nag-file siya June 6 kay Secretary of Finance. Nandun na sa lamesa ni Secretary of Finance. Ilang araw ba meron si Secretary of Finance to review the appeal? According to the commission order, the Secretary of Finance has a period of 15 days from receipt of the BOC notice to decide on the matter. Kung sino yung susundin niya. 
yung tariff commission ba na nagsabi 0% rate of duty or yung Bureau of Customs ba na nagsabi that should be classified under a tariff heading with a rate of duty of 10%. Okay? So what if lumagpas na sa 15 days? Diba? The Secretary of Finance as a period of 15 days, lumagpas na sa 15 days. For example, June 6, nagpal si Bureau of Customs. So the Secretary of Finance as until ilang araw, June 21, to decide what if lumagpas na yung June 21. Nag-June 22 na, nag-June 23 na, wala pa rin decision si Secretary of Finance. What does it mean? Okay, what does it mean? According to the Tariff Commission order, it means that the Secretary of Finance agreed with the Tariff Commission. And the Tariff Commission decision is deemed affirmed or confirmed. Okay. Let's have a question here. Mr. A, an importer, presented to the Bureau of Customs an, adver an advance ruling issued by the Tariff Commission. The examiner insisted that the Tariff Commission order does not apply to the Bureau of Customs. Is the BOC examiner correct or not? Yes or no? Is the examiner correct or not? Okay, sabi, sabi, okay, maraming nag no, and your answer is correct. It is no. Why? Because as mentioned earlier, under the CMTA, the ruling issued by the Tariff Commission is binding with the Bureau of Customs. So kahit ayaw ni Bureau of Customs, dapat niyang sundin kasi binding sa kanya yung decision ni Tariff Commission. Okay. So kung ayaw ni Bureau of Customs, anong remedy ni Bureau of Customs? Elevate the matter to the Secretary of Finance within a period of five days. And the Secretary of Finance as a 15 days from receipt of the notice from the Bureau of Customs to decide on the appeal made by the Bureau of Customs. Yung, up, yung advance ruling, kailan ba siya valid? Hanggang forever? Okay, hanggang magunaw ang mundo? Hanggang matapos ang mundo? No. There is a limitation to the effectivity or validity of the advance ruling. Napakagaling ng ating mga estudyante dito. That is correct. Five years. Okay? Within five years. Saan tayo magsisimula ng magbilang ng five years? From the date of issuance. So the five-year period starts from the date of issuance. Merong bang pwedeng mas maikli pa sa five years? Yes. Or pwede bang hindi maging valid yung advance ruling sa period ng five years? Yes. Except when earlier revoke. Okay? Nag-release na si Tariff Commission ng ruling but na found out ni Tariff Commission na meron palang false representation, hindi pala totoo yung sinabmit ni, ni importer, then the Tariff Commission may revoke the advance ruling or may modify the advance ruling. Paano niya modify if there's a change in facts or circumstances? May nagbago. Yung lapis mo kanina na sinabi mo, sasagutin niya lang yung tamang sagot Later on, napatunayan na wala pa lang sagot na tama doon sa sinid ng lapis mo. So there's a change in facts or circumstances. And that's a ground for the modification of the, of the advance ruling. Next, when there is error, may pagkakamali, or may nagbago sa batas. For example, yung ating general rules for the interpretation of the harmony system, binago siya. Then, of course, that would have an effect on the tariff classification. Kasi nga, yung tariff classification ruling was issued following the old rules. Eh ngayon, meron ng bagong rules. Then, of course, the advance ruling will also be correspondingly modified. Or, there is a judicial decision. Meron ng decision yung Korte Suprema na nagsabi na kapag yung lapis ang inimport mo, ito yung classification niya. Then, that would prevail. Okay? that would prevail over the advance ruling issued by the Tariff Commission. Or there's a change in policy. Diba? Uh, the, a, the HS, the, the harmonized system could change every five years. Diba? So we have the EHTN 2022. 
Then prior to that is the 2006. So kung yung tariff classification ruling mo was issued prior to 2022, pag, pag dating ng bagong uh, tariff book in 2022, then there might also be a change in policy. So your advance ruling is also correspondingly modified. But the, can the modification apply retro, uh, retroactively? What does it mean? For example, lumabas yung tariff classification ruling mo, yung advance ruling mo in 20, let us say 2022. Okay, January 2022. Tapos, nag-import ka hanggang December 2022. Dahil sa tariff classification ruling mo, wala kang binayarang customs duties from January 2022 to December 2022. And then, nung, nung June 2023, binago ng tariff commission yung advance ruling niya. Does that mean na nung nagbago yung advance ruling o nagbago yung ruling ni tariff commission, sisingilin ka ni Bureau of Customs from January 2022 hanggang the date of your revocation? No, hindi ka na sisingili ni Bureau of Customs because the modification applies prospectively. Ibig sabihin, it only applies from the time that you receive the information of the modification hanggang uh, sa susunod mong transaction. But yung dati mong transactions will no longer be disturbed because it only applies prospectively. Next, can the, administ uh, can the advance ruling be revoked? Of course. Kapag yung basis ng application mo ay false or misleading information. ba? If you recall in the discussion on police authority or in search and seizure, meron tayong tinatawag na doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree. Kapag yung search ay illegal, whatever evidence obtained cannot be admitted in any proceeding. Kasi nga, yung pagkuha mismo ng ebidensya, mali na. Yung pagkuha ng ebidensya, illegal na. So whatever evidence obtained cannot be used because it is illegal. Ganito din yan. Kung yung application mo nagsinungaling ka at nag-decide si Tariff Commission based doon sa maling information mo, then the decision will also be misleading or false. Diba? Kapag yung isang bagay o yung ginawa mo ay nagsinungaling ka, whatever decision based on that false or misleading information will also be revoked. Kasi nga, yung decision was based on false or misleading information. Okay, the doctrine is, uh, itatype ko na lang ha, the doctrine is the root of the poisonous tree doctrine. The fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. Yan yung ibig sabihin niyan, di ba? Sa search lang yan ha, it applies only to illegal search. Because under the Constitution, the requirement of the Constitution is that whenever a search is made or an arrest is made, there should be a warrant. That's the general rule. But there are exceptions and one of which is the conduct of custom search. Under the CMTA, Pwedeng mag-search si Bureau of Customs kahit walang search warrant kapag yung pupuntahan ay hindi bahay. Diba? The pers any person exercising police authority may enter, pass through, or search any place, any building, enclosure, warehouse other than a dwelling house. Okay? At kapag dwelling house na yung pupuntahan niya, dapat meron na siyang search warrant. Under the Constitution, any evidence obtained in an illegal search cannot be admitted as evidence. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree. Kung yung mismong puno ay poisonous, so yung bunga niya, poisonous rin. So kung yung pag-search mo ay illegal, kung ano man yung evidence na makukuha mo sa illegal search would also be illegal. Yan yung ibig sabihin ng doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree. So kung i-apply natin dito, kung yung mismong pag-apply mo nagsinungaling ka at napaniwala mo yung tariff commission sa kasinungalingan mo, later on malalaman ng tariff commission na nagsinungaling ka, then the decision of the tariff commission 
can also be revoked on the ground that in the first place nagsinungaling ka. Okay? And then, the revocation is without prejudice to the filing of criminal, civil, or administrative cases. For example, nagsubmit ka ng document. Yung sinubmit mong document, fake. So, pwede kang makulong kasi nagsubmit ka ng falsified document. Most especially if yung finalsify mo ay public document. Kunwari, nag-file, nag-submit ka ng permit from a regulatory agency na, oh, mag-a-apply ako ng advance ruling. Ang, doc, ang, ang, ang goods ko or ang shipment ko ay regulated. Pero meron akong permit dito galing sa Bureau of Animal Industry. Nag-submit ka ng document galing sa Bureau of Animal Industry. And later on, it was found to be fake. So, it you can also be charged criminally for submitting a falsified document. Or, di ba nanumpa ka, you certify under oath that the information you submitted to the Tariff Commission is true and correct. And later on, nalaman na hindi pala. So, you committed, um, you committed perjury. So, you can be charged criminally. Or, ikaw ang broker. Without the knowledge of your importer, nag-submit ka ng fake documents. That is an ethical practice. That is immoral practice. That is dishonesty. So, pwede ka ring ma-file ng civil case or administrative case before the PRC. Pwede kang matanggalan ng iyong lisensya. So, that is what we mean here by without prejudice to the filing of criminal, civil, or administrative case. As far as your advanced ruling application is concerned, marirevoke siya. And then if maki, mapa, mapapatunayan na meron kang additional civil, criminal, or administrative liability, then the corresponding cases can be filed against you, the applicant. Okay? Next, what if pininay ni Tariff Commission or nagbigay ng ruling si Tariff Commission but that is not favorable to the applicant? For example, Si applicant nag-submit ng application with the, with the intention na yung ruling ni Tariff Commission ay favorable sa kanya. Sasabihin niya, sige mag-apply tayo kay Tariff Commission kasi malakas ang paniniwala ko na ang ibibigay ni Tariff Commission na classification, uh, na classification ay ang rate of duty 0% or ang rate of duty is 1% lang. Nag-apply ka. Nung nag-apply ka, lumabas yung decision. Sa halip na yung tariff classification niya ay rate of duty ay 0 or 1%. Ang binigay ni Tariff Commission, 10% yung rate of duty. Sa halip na makapag, uh, sa halip na mas maliit yung babayaran mo, mas lumaki pa kasi naging 10%. So that is unfavorable to the, to the importer or to the applicant. Anong remedy ni applicant? Under the Tariff Commission order, pwede siya mag-file ng motion for reconsideration. Okay? So, pwede mong explain doon sa application mo na bakit ito yung dapat na tariff classification sa goods mo. Pwede mong isubmit, for example, sa country of origin. Let us say, ang country of origin ay Japan. Yung importation, yung products mo galing sa Japan. And then yung Japan na let us say kung anong ano man yung tariff commission agency ng Japan or customs agency ng Japan nag-issue ng ruling na ito yung ito yung tariff classification niya. So you could also cite that na under the under Japanese uh, customs ito yung tariff classification niya. So you could also cite that as pwede din huba na ito din yung tariff classification na i-issue ninyo para sa commodity ko. So you could also file that in your motion for reconsideration. And you submit your motion for reconsideration within 10 days from receipt of the advance ruling. Sir, bakit 10 days from receipt? Bakit hindi 10 days from the date of issuance? Kasi nga, hindi nyo naman alam yung resulta ng advance ruling until you receive the copy of the advance ruling. Kaya lahat po ng period of appeals Filing ng motion for reconsideration, filing ng protest, filing ng appeal would always count from the date of receipt. Because only when you receive the decision that you know 
what the decision is all about. And that is the only time that you would also know what appropriate action you can take. Okay. Mistake of fact. Pwede niyong isight na nagkamali ng appreciation si Tariff Commission. Maliho yung pagkaintindi niyo doon sa description na meron kami. So that's mistake of fact. Or excusable negligence. For example, sinabi natin kanina na si Tariff Commission pwede siyang humingi ng additional information sa part ninyo. And then because of ex because of negligence, hindi kayo nakapag-submit. So, pwede kayong mag-file ng motion for reconsideration on the ground of excusable negligence. Or newly discovered evidence or information. After the decision of the Tariff Commission, yun lang nalaman, ah, meron palang brochure, meron palang additional information. You submit it to the Tariff Commission by filing a motion for reconsideration. And once you file your, ta your motion for reconsideration, the Tariff Commission has a period of 10 days from receipt of your MR to decide. Sir, what if nag-decide si Tariff Commission, ito yung advance ruling niya, not favorable to the importer. Within 10 days, nag-submit kami ng motion for reconsideration. Tapos nag-decide ulit si Tariff Commission, hindi pa rin siya nag-agree sa side namin. Pwede din po ba kaming mag-file ulit ng motion for reconsideration? So that means one motion for reconsideration, another motion for reconsideration. Can you do that? No. Under the commission order, only one motion for reconsideration is allowed. So paano kung i-deny ni Tariff Commission yung inyong motion for reconsideration? There is another remedy. Okay? So ito. On April 20, the Tariff Commission issued the advance ruling. The importer received the ruling on April 25, but was not satisfied. Hindi siya nakontento kasi sa tingin niya, hindi ito tama. What is the remedy of the importer? Sige, what do you think is the remedy of the importer? The remedy of the importer is... Okay. Correct. File a motion for reconsideration. Kailan? Ilang araw meron? 10 days. So file a motion for reconsideration not later than May 5. On what ground? Mistake of fact, excusable negligence, newly discovered evidence, or newly discovered information. Okay? Okay, so what is the remedy of an applicant in case na na-deny yung kanyang motion for reconsideration? Ito yung tanong ko kanina. What do you think is the remedy of the importer in case of denial of the motion for reconsideration? So kapag na-deny ni Tariff Commission yung inyong motion for reconsideration, your next remedy is to file an appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals. So, punta ka na sa Court of Tax Appeals. Within how many days? Within 30 days from receipt of the decision denying the MR. So, ang remedy mo dyan is petition for review to the Court of Tax Appeals. Okay? So, that ends our presentation as far as tariff classification is concerned. We move on to the next advanced ruling. Ano yung next? Customs valuation and rules of origin. So, ang jurisdiction po ng Tariff Commission will only be tariff classification. Kapag customs valuation at rules of origin naman ang pag-uusapan, yung application nyo would, should be filed with the Bureau of Customs. So, what are the objectives of the Memorandum Order and Administrative Order? Katulad pa rin kanina sa Tariff Commission Order, it would add certainty and predictability to international trade. Next, ensure uniformity and consistency in the application of advance ruling. Establish a system in line with the revised Kyoto Convention, the World Trade Organization, and the ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement. Increase the level of compliance. So magkahalintula do yung objectives ng Commission Order Number 2017-01 kanina at saka ng Customs Administrative Order and Customs Memorandum Order Number 30-2016.
So let's define some terms. Yung advance ruling, magkahaling tulad din ho sila kanina sa Tariff Commission. It's an official written. Ang definition lang ng Tariff Commission is an official written decision. Di ba? Dito naman, ang definition niya, official written and binding ruling issued by the Commissioner of Customs on two cases, origin and the customs valuation of the goods. So who may apply? Gatula din do kanina, yung natural or juridical person, importer or the exporter, or the authorized representative. What are the conditions? Katula din ho kanina. Common din yung conditions because that is set out in the CMTA. Only one type of product filed at least 90 days prior to importation or exportation. But as far as the Bureau of Customs is concerned, yung date of importation is the date of lodgement of the goods declaration. So what are the procedures? Sa, sa Bureau of Customs po, electronic yung submission. So you submit your application with the Office of the Commissioner. There's a technical service team on advance ruling. So you send that through the Office of the Commissioner. And then in filing your application, you also need to submit your proof of payment. Yung kanina sa Tariff Commission, 510 pesos. Dito sa Bureau of Customs, 1,500. So para hindi kayo malito, ang Bureau of Customs, 1,500. Ang Tariff Commission, 510. Okay? So binaliktad lang yung 1 tsaka yung 5. And then, you will be notified of the receipt of your application within 15 working days. And then in case the Bureau of Customs would require you additional information, you have to submit that within 30 calendar days. Yung kanina sa Tariff Commission must make click 10 days lang. The, here in the Bureau of Customs, you can submit within 30 calendar days. So yung Tariff Commission, meron siyang form for the application. Sa Bureau of Customs, meron din siyang sariling form sa application. Ito yung application for Advanced Ruling on Rules of Origin. Meron ding details sa requesting party at meron ding supporting information na kailangan ni Bureau of Customs. Ito naman yung form for Advanced Ruling on Valuation. Tapos ito din yung mga supporting documents or information. Similar with the Tariff Commission application form, there is also a declaration and undertaking. And then you have to sign that form and submit it online electronically to the Bureau of Customs. Can the application be withdrawn? Katula din ho kanina sa Tariff Commission, pwede ding i-withdraw ni applicant yung kaniyang application. And as mentioned previously, ganun din, at any time before the advance ruling is issued. So expressly in writing. Meron din siyang implied withdrawal Parang abandonment, may, may express abandonment, meron ding implied abandonment. So as far as the application for advance ruling on customs valuation and tariff classification is concerned, dalawa yung cases for withdrawal. Either expressly, so susulat in writing, si applicant na i-withdraw niya yung kanyang application, or impliedly, not, hindi siya sumulat, but meron siyang ginawa. Like for example, in-import na niya yung yung shipment, in-import na yung goods without waiting for the advance ruling. So in effect, we need na niya, is no longer interested to the advance ruling or hindi siya nag-submit ng additional information that would also be construed as implied withdrawal of your application for advance. So make sure na kapag hiningan kayo ni Bureau of Customs ng additional information, you submit immediately within the allowable period of time. Otherwise, the Bureau of Customs may interpret that you're no longer interested in pursuing your application. A okay, question. Due to the pandemic, a corporation, a supplier from Japan, was not able to produce the goods to be imported by B Corporation. B Corporation withdrew its application for advanced ruling with the Bureau of Customs. After a year, a corporation recovered and is now on the process of manufacturing the goods. 
Can B Corporation refile its application which it earlier withdrew? So dito, may dalawang corporation. Yung A Corporation na galing sa Japan, na nasa Japan, at yung B Corporation na nasa Pilipinas. Supposedly, bibili si B Corporation ng produkto galing kay A Corporation. At bibili siya prior sa kanyang bilhin, mag-file siya ng application for advance ruling. But dahil nagka-pandemic, hindi natuloy yung order niya kay A Corporation. So, hindi niya rin tinuloy yung kanyang application. Later on, nagsimula ulit si A Corporation na mag-produce ng kanyang produkto. At itutuloy na ni B Corporation sa Pilipinas yung kanyang plano na mag-import. So, question. Nag-withdraw na sa dati. Pwede niya rin bang i-refile o mag-file ulit ng application? Yes or no? Okay, so tama kayo. Yes, a withdrawal of the request shall not prohibit the filing of another request. But take note, you still have to comply with the conditions earlier. Dapat ganun pa rin yung filing at least 90 days prior to the importation or exportation. The application must only involve one type of good or commodity. Okay. So when is an advance ruling issued? Kanina sa Tariff Commission, within 30 days. So yung sa Tariff Commission kanina, calendar days yun. Under the CMTA, calendar days yun. But under the COW, it's 30 working days. Okay? Sir, may effect ba yung 30 calendar days at yung 30 working days? Yes or no? May pagkakaiba ba yung calendar days at working days? Yes. Why? In calendar days, kasama yung Saturday and Sunday sa pag-count. Okay? Yung working days, hindi kasama yung Saturday, Sunday, tsaka holiday. So in effect, mas mahaba yung working days than calendar days. So, ano yung effect niya kay importer? Mas mahaba yung paghihintay ni importer or ni exporter kasi 30 working days yung binibigay sa Bureau of Customs. And the 30 working days starts to count on the date of receipt of the request or the date of receipt of the additional documents. Diba kanina, binanggit natin, pwedeng mag-require si Bureau of Customs ng additional information. So the 30 working days will start to count from the date that you submit the additional documents. Pwede din bang hindi tanggapin? Yes. Katulad kanina sa Tariff Commission, pwede niyang hindi tanggapin yung inyong application kapag hindi ka nagbayad ng filing fee, kapag multiple goods yung ini-file nyo, kapag hindi nasa tamang form yung pag-file nyo, dito, pwede din hindi tanggapin ni Bureau of Customs kapag meron na siyang pending administrative review. Okay? Or pending kayo ng post-clearance audit, hindi muna kayo pwedeng mag-apply. Or meron ng previously issued advance ruling on the same subject goods. Or ang sinabmit nyo kay Bureau of Customs hypothetical situation lamang. Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo, wala kayong intention na mag-import. Gusto nyo lang mag-apply. So that is a ground for non-acceptance. Why? Why do you think the Bureau of Customs will not accept your application if it is only based on a hypothetical situation? Why? Kasi sayang lang yung decision niya eh hindi naman kayo totoong mag-i-import or mag-i-export. It is a futile exercise. Sinayang yun yung panahon ni Bureau of Customs, sinayang yun yung application fee ninyo kasi hindi naman talaga kayo tunay na mag import or mag export Take note, as part of due process, the Bureau of Customs shall notify the requesting person in writing through electronic means. Ibig sabihin, di ba nag-apply kayo electronically? So sasagutin din kayo ni Bureau of Customs electronically. The Bureau of Customs is required to state the reasons for the non-acceptance of your application. What is the effect of the advance ruling? According to the Bureau of Customs, it is only beneficial to the requesting party. So kapag si Corporation A nag-file ng advance ruling at nag-decide si Bureau of Customs, si Corporation B, hindi niya pwedeng gamitin yung advance ruling ni Corporation A. Why? Because it only benefits the requesting party. If gusto ni Corporation B, mag-file din siya ng sarili niyang application. Next, 
it takes effect on the date of issuance. So it will if take effect on the date of issuance unless another date is specified. When is it valid? Sa tariff commission, mas mahaba, five years. Dito sa Bureau of Customs, three years lang from the date of issuance. Except kung a shorter period is provided. For example, pwede sa Bini Bureau of Customs, one year lang to valid, six months lang to valid, two years lang to valid. Pwede yan kasi allowed siya under the Customs Memorandum Order. Can the advance ruling be modified? Yes, kapag may clerical error. Kapag may change sa material facts and circumstances or when there is misleading information, okay, excusable neglect or honest mistake or change in applicable law and the modification applies prospectively. Okay? Next. Can the advance ruling be revoked? Yes. Katulad din sa Tariff Commission Order, Ang Customs Memorandum Order and the Customs Administrative Order also provides that the advance ruling can also be modified, revoked in case of incomplete, incorrect, false, or misleading information. And in case the Bureau of Customs revokes the advance ruling, it shall give a written notice to the applicant stating out the facts and the basis. Bakit kailangan notify? Because the importer has the remedy diba? to question the unfavorable ruling. Okay, what is the remedy of the applicant? Katulad din kanina sa Tariff Commission, file a motion for reconsideration. But unlike sa Tariff Commission na 10 days ang binibigay kay importer, si Bureau of Customs mas mahaba 15 days ang ibinibigay ni Bureau of Customs para mag-file ng motion for reconsideration. So, what if Nag-MR na si importer kay Bureau of Customs. Dininay pa rin ni Bureau of Customs yung kanyang MR. Ano yung remedy niya? Can he file another MR? No. According to the CAO, according to the CMO, katulad din sa Tariff Commission, kapag nag-file ka ng MR at dininay yung MR mo, ang remedy mo would be to file an appeal to the Court of Tax Appeals through a petition for review within 30 days from receipt of the decision denying the motion for reconsideration. Okay? So that ends my presentation on the advance ruling on valuation, rules of origin, and tariff classification. It's now time for you to ask your questions, if any. Okay? Do you have any Question? Meron bang tanong? Yes, there's a question here. Can you please share it in the chat box or would you like to ask it personally? Any question from the audience or from the participants? Here, let me read the question for a while. Okay, there's a question here. Is it required for advance ruling? No, it's not required. It's an option. Okay, it's an option available to the importer. Katulad nung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, if you do not want to incur unnecessary expenses kasi mas matatagalan yung pag-process ng shipment ninyo, then you can avail of advance ruling. Kung na foreseen nyo na magkakaroon ng problema sa classification, sa valuation or sa application ng rules of origin, then you might avail of advance ruling. So again, it's not requirement. It's not a requirement. It is just 
a possible remedy on the part of the importer. My question dito, when po ba ulit yung in ating webinar? Then let's schedule. Okay, let's schedule. Ito naman yung webinar natin ngayon is because of the invitation of the Philippine Christian University. So, sa susunod, baka meron ulit mag-invite or meron tayong initiated na webinar, then we will let you know. Sir, what if meron na hong advanced ruling tapos hindi itinuloy ang importation? Anong mangyayari sa advanced ruling? Then it would have no effect. Okay? It would have no effect. Kasi nga, wala namang importation na mangyayari. There is no situation, there is no importation or exportation that you can apply the advanced ruling. So, wala siyang effect. Wala siyang effect. Okay? Sir, may instance po ba na nag-take ng sample si Tariff Commission to determine the correct description of the item subject to advanced ruling? Ito, I have not heard of, of an instance where the Tariff Commission sought the, uh, the copy of a sample or a sample from, for advanced ruling, but sa dispute ruling, meron na. Meron na kaming natanggap na mga request gan ng ganyan. Kasi... Kapag si Tariff Commission nagko-communicate kay importer, nagno-notify din siya kay Bureau of Customs. But if we apply it, okay, if we apply it by analogy, kung sa dispute ruling nangihingi ng sample si Tariff Commission, most likely nangihingi din si Tariff Commission ng sample sa advance ruling. All the more sa advance ruling kasi nga advance siya, di ba, prior to the importation or exportation. So walang makikita na actual importation si Ah, uh, si import si tariff commission. So manghihingi talaga ng sample. Okay? John, when it comes to computation, uh, just send me a message sa aking Facebook page. Okay? I'll try to answer your question on computation, but let me just have a disclaimer. Ang field of specialization ko po ay customs laws and procedures. So hindi po hindi ko po field yung yung computation. But I will try to answer your question on computation. So please send it through my Facebook page. And then I'll ask some of our professors who are also into the field of computation. So hingi ako ng tulong sa kanila dungkol doon sa computation problem mo. Sir, pwede po bang magamit yung advanced ruling na issued na ng tariff commission by different company but same commodity? My answer to that would be pwede kasi hindi naman siya declare or sinabi sa Tariff Commission order na bawal. Unlike sa Tariff Commission, at unlike sa Bureau of Customs na binanggit expressly doon sa CAO at sa CMO na the advance ruling shall only benefit the applicant. Okay? Unlike, sa BOC kasi sinabi niya it will only benefit the applicant. Doon sa Tariff Commission order, hindi, hindi expressly na sinabi na it will only benefit the applicant. So since hindi naman expressly na sinabi, pwede rin yung gamitin ni ni ni, com, ni other company, okay? Yung kanyang advance ruling. But of course, pwede din yang kapag binigay mo na yan kay Bureau of Customs, pwede din sabihin ni Bureau of Customs, it does not apply to you kasi hindi naman ikaw yung importer. Okay? But it does not prevent you from doing it kasi hindi naman expressly na ipinagbawal sa Tariff Commission order na gamitin ng ibang uh, ng ibang party other than the applicant himself or herself. Sir, anong pagkakaiba ng motion for reconsideration at motion for reinvestigation? Okay. Etong tang etong tanong na to pang post clearance audit na to. But sige lang, I'll answer it. Sa post-clearance audit kasi, meron tayong request for reinvestigation, meron ding request for reconsideration. Anong pagkakaiba nila? Yung request for reinvestigation, that would require the person requesting to submit additional documents. Sa request for reconsideration, walang additional documents na kailangan. Gusto mo lang baguhin yung decision ni PICAG. Gusto mo lang baguhin yung audit findings ni PICAG. Kapag request for reinvestigation, you submit additional documents. Okay? Yan yung pagkakaiba nila. Request for reinvestigation, magsasubmit ka ng additional documents. 
request for re uh, request for reconsideration no need to submit additional documents but as far as advance ruling is concerned wala ho tayong motion for reinvestigation motion for reconsideration lang ho ang meron tayo Sir, what if na-accept po yung appeal sa city? Ano po yung magpe-prevail? The Court of Tax Appeals decision prevails over the Tariff Commission ruling or the Bureau of Customs ruling. Bakit? Kasi nga, yung Court of Tax Appeals, appellate siya. May appellate jurisdiction siya. Yan yung mismong, uh, yan yung mismong purpose kung bakit ka mag a -appeal. Para yung decision ni Tariff Commission or yung decision ni Bureau of Customs na hindi favorable sa iyo, baguhin siya at maging favorable sa iyo. So in case the, the Court of Tax Appeals renders a decision, that decision prevails over the Tariff Commission's order or the Bureau of Customs orders. Sir, if the examiner neglects the advance ruling or ginigipits importer, kanino po pwedeng umangal si importer? Okay. Kapag ganyan, you avail of the dispute ruling under Customs Administrative Order Number 2- 2020. Kapag ayaw na examiner, elevate ito the appraiser. After appraiser, pag ayaw pa rin appraiser, elevate ito the chief of the assessment division. So, in that case of the ports in Manila, so yung formal entry division or informal entry division. At kung ayaw pa rin ng hepe ng formal entry division, you elevate ito the deputy collector for assessment. Pag ayaw pa rin, elevate ito the district collector. But take note, you can always cite the express provision of the CMTA that says the advance ruling issued by the Tariff Commission is binding with the Bureau of Customs. So yan yung isa sa inyo. Yan yung inyong uh, stand that the decision on the advance ruling is binding with the Bureau of Customs. Sir, uh, Sir, if mag-refile ka po ba ng AR, will you still be paying another filing fee? Yes. Yes. One application, one filing fee. So kung mag-re-reapply ka, that is another application. So bayad ka ulit ng filing fee. Okay. Sir, related po ba yung mode of appeal, petition for review, at yung rep leave in suit, at temporary restraining order? Ano yung pinagkakaiba? Okay, ito yan. Yung petition for review is a mode of appeal. Okay. Mag-a-appeal ka kapag merong desisyon na hindi mo nagustuhan at gusto mong ipabago para maging favorable sa iyo. That is appeal. Yung rep living suit naman, that is a civil action kapag merong bagay, personal property na kinuha sa iyo at gusto mong bawiin. For example, yung sasakyan. Okay? Kinuha sa iyo. Gusto mong bawiin, then you file a rep live suit. Yung rep live suit, usually yan nangyayari sa mga previous cases. Ha? For example, merong sasakyan, merong, uh, merong case. I just forgot the title of the case. Diniscuss ko to sa CM325, yung customs proceedings. Nag-issue ng warrant of seizure and detention si district collector. So, kinuha yung custody ng sasakyan. Ang ginawa ni importer sa halip na mag-participate siya sa seizure or forfeiture proceedings, pumunta siya sa regional trial court at nag-file ng replevin suit. Ang purpose ng replevin ay para kunin yung possession ng property from the Bureau of Customs pabalik kay importer. That is replevin suit. Ang temporary restraining order naman, that is an order issued by a court commanding a lower office or a lower court from doing something or from preventing that office to perform something. Yan yung temporary restraining order. Okay? Sir OJT, student po kami, nasabi po sa amin na lawyer lang ng client, ng broker, supervisor, yung nagpa-file ng advance ruling. Hindi po ba pwedeng mag-file yung broker? Okay. Let me clarify it. Under the Tariff Commission order, ang sabi, any person who is authorized in writing by can apply for advance ruling. So kung si broker binigyan ng authority ni importer through a special power of attorney or through a board resolution na pwede siya yung mag-represent kay importer 
in filing before the Tariff Commission or the Bureau of Customs, pwede. Well, hindi naman po sinabi sa, sa Tariff Commission na lawyer lang ang pwede. Di ba? If you read the Tariff Commission order, hindi naman sinabi any natural or juridical person or lawyer will file the application for advance ruling. Ang sinabi lang doon, any natural or juridical person or authorized representative. Generic yung pagka-term, authorized representative. Kahit hindi broker, kahit hindi lawyer, kahit empleyado lang ni importer, pwedeng mag-file ng application for advance ruling. Okay, how many products or items should an advance ruling cover? One type of commodity only. One type of commodity lang. What are the benefits of advance ruling on customs? Siguro ang ibig nyo sabihin, a benefit sa customs valuation. Yun, number one, it will give you uh, predictability or certainty kasi alam mo, ito talaga yung value ng goods mo. Diba? Kapag alam mo na, katulad, ng gani, katulad nito, let's say for example, mag -e enroll ka sa isang review center. Diba? Mas maganda kung yung review center or yung paaralan nagbibigay ng advance information sa Facebook or kung whatever means available, ilalagay na niya kung magkano yung babayaran mong tuition fees. Why? Kasi ikaw, alam mo na magkano yung babayaran mo sa school na yan. Diba? Ganun din yan sa tariff classification, advance ruling ng valuation and rules of origin. That will give you an information na, ah, ito pala yung babayaran ko. Ito pala yung value ng goods ko. Ito pala yung rate of duty ko. Ito pala yung, ah, pwede pala ako mag-avail ng, ng tariff, ah, ng preferential tariff kasi pasok siya sa originating requirement. Diba? It adds uh, predictability and certainty on your part na ito lang pala yung babayaran ko. So that is the most essential benefit Okay, the number one benefit on the part ni importer or exporter. Sir, alin po ba mas maganda, BOC or tariff classification advance rate? Depende. Kung tariff classification, doon ka sa tariff commission. Kung customs valuation or advance ruling, doon ka sa Bureau of Customs. Hindi pwede mag-apply ka ng tariff classification advance ruling kay BOC kasi wala siyang jurisdiction. Hindi ka rin pwede mag-apply ng advance ruling on Customs Valuation at Rules of Origin kay Tariff Commission kasi wala naman siyang jurisdiction. Sir, in which cases issuance of an advance ruling may be declined? Okay, yung katulad nung kanina, yung binanggit ko, kung meron na siyang uh, meron ng pending court litigation, kung subject siya to administrative review, okay, that's ground for the non-acceptance or non-issuance of the advance ruling. You're correct, Mark. Kapag reconsideration, no additional document, no additional evidence, no additional information is required. Sir, related po ba yung akin? Natanong ko na to. Ah, nasagot ko na to. Okay. Sir, once po ba nag-withdraw ng application, pwede po ba i-refund? Uh, I think hindi na pwedeng ma-refund. Okay, I think hindi na pwedeng ma-refund. Why? Number one, hindi binanggit doon sa commission order at sa memorandum order na kapag nag-withdraw ka, isa sa uli sa iyo yung filing fee. In fact, ang sinabi dito, non-refundable fee. So hindi mo talaga ma, hindi na talaga mai-refund -re yan sa inyo. Okay, ito lang. Kapag nagbayad ka na sa gobyerno, pahirapan ho yung panghingi ng refund kasi pumasok na yan sa kaban ng bayan. So so if hindi po kayo tutuloy sa inyong advance ruling, might as well not file na lang ho. Pero ito lang naman yung yung advice ko dyan, magkano lang naman yung filing fee versus doon sa benefit na makukuha ninyo. Di ba? Katulad nung kanina, yung pinakita ko sa inyong problem, 600,000 yung ginastos ni importer for storage charges kasi natagalan yung kanyang pag-process ng goods declaration because of a tariff classification dispute. What is 510 versus 600,000 pesos? Di ba? Napaka-glaring yung difference. Sir, bakit po kailangan dumaan kay attorney ang mga frozen meat na red? Uh, ano po bang ibig sabihin niyo po dito sa bakit kailangan dumaan kay attorney ang frozen meat? Okay? Kindly expound na lang ho para masagot natin yung tanong. 
Sir, paano po kung hindi pa rin favorable? Okay, very good question, Lothar. If sa level ni Court of Tax Appeals, hindi pa rin favorable sa inyo, ganito yan. Sa Court of Tax Appeals kasi, dalawa yan. Una mong pupuntahan, CTA Division. Okay? Merong division, merong NBA. So yung division, kasi yung Court of Tax Appeals, sham na justices yan. Sham sila, sham. Tapos, they work in division. So ibig sabihin, tigta-tatatlo. First division, second division, third division. So pag akit mo kay Court of Tax Appeals, dun ka muna sa division. Okay? Sa division, kapag yung decision ni division not favorable to you, you file a motion for reconsideration. Kapag yung decision ng motion for reconsideration mo hindi favorable sa iyo, mag-file ka na ng petition for review before the Court of Tax Appeals and Bank. Kapag sa Court of Tax Appeals and Bank hindi ka pa rin panalo, punta ka na kay Supreme Court. Okay? Supreme Court na. After Court of Tax Appeals, Supreme Court ka na. Okay? Hi, good afternoon po, Prof. Jim C. Thank you po for the invitation, Prof. Okay, sir. It means, sir, kinuha ng BOC yung sasakyan mo in illegal way. Doon po ba papasok yung sabi nyo na fruit of poisonous tree doctrine? Yes, if yung pagkuha ni BOC ay illegal, if the search is illegal, if the seizure is illegal, then the evidence obtained cannot be admitted. Kasi nga, yung pagkuha, illegal. Okay? Yung pagkuha, illegal. For example, kapag yung, yung sasakyan na imported, kinuha ni BOC na nakaparada sa bahay ni importer, wala siyang search warrant, kinuha niya, that is illegal. So yung nakuha na evidence sa illegal search is also illegal. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya pwedeng gamitin yung sasakyan as evidence na ito yung smuggled car, oh, hindi niya pwedeng gamitin yan kasi nga illegal yung pagkuha. Okay? Illegal yung pagkuha. So that is the doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree. Sir, may chance po ba na ma-amend yung advance ruling? Like for example, mapaikli yung at least 90 days before arrival? Kung babaguhin yung CMTA. Pero kung yan pa rin yung CMTA, Yan yung nasa batas, at least 90 days prior to importation or exportation, hindi talaga yun mababago. Kapag sinabi sa CMTA na it will only involve one commodity, hindi yan mababago. Unless baguhin mo yung CMTA. Sir, pwede po ba manghingi ng PowerPoint ninyo? Um, when it comes to that kasi, kapag free webinar, I don't usually give my PowerPoint. Okay, I don't give my PowerPoint. Why? Kasi yung mismong CMO, yung CAO, tsaka yung Tariff Commission Order, na-access nyo naman yan sa website ni Tariff Commission, tsaka ni Bureau of Customs. Secondly, ito pong presentation ko ngayon, ito pong webinar natin ngayon, ipopost ko po ito sa YouTube channel ko. So in case you need to, to view my lecture again, you can always view that in my YouTube channel. So kung titingnan nyo yung, tarif, yung presentation ko, makikita nyo rin naman ho yan sa aking YouTube channel. Okay. Okay, sir, ano po bang pagkakaiba ng Sandigan Bayan at Court of Appeals? Okay. Sige, sasagutin ko pa rin 'yan unless kulang na tayo sa oras. Please let me know lang ha. Um Nina, just let me know if kukulangin tayo ng oras kasi na medyo marami-rami yung mga tanong dito. Yung Sandigan Bayan po ay isang special court na ang jurisdiction niya ay criminal cases involving public officials in the performance of their duties. Kapag ho, yung akusado ay government official at yung kanyang salary grade ay salary grade 27 and up, dun ho siya kakasuhan sa Sandigan Bayan. Okay? Kapag ho, yung kaso ninyo ay hindi po criminal case related to the performance of official function ng isang public official, dun ho siya sa regular courts, either regional trial court or municipal trial court. Yung court of appeals po ay appellate court. Ibig sabihin, meron ho siyang mga kaso na ire-review. Kaninong decision po ang ire-review ni court of appeals? Yung decision po ni regional trial court in the exercise of its original jurisdiction or appellate jurisdiction, or yung decision po 
Ah yes, tama. Yung decision ng ho ni Regional Trial Court, yung i-review ni Court of Appeals. Okay? So yan yung pagkakaiba sa Digan Bayan criminal cases against public officials with salary grade 27 and up. Kapag hindi naman salary grade 27 and up, Regional Trial Court or Municipal Trial Court. Yung decision ni Regional Trial Court pwedeng mong i-appeal kay Court of Appeals. May limit po ba yung number of applications sa pagpile ng AR? The, the, the Tariff Commission Order and the, commission uh, the Customs Administrative Order or CMO does not provide any limitation. So as long as you comply with the conditions, as long as you pay, as long as you submit various applications per separate commodity, then you can file as many as you can. Yes, I will upload. Yes, Clint, I will upload this lecture in my YouTube channel later on. Sir, may remedy po ba if yung goods forfeited na ng government, uh, nasa seizure and forfeiture na tayo? Yung remedy yan is you file an appeal of the decision of the district collector. So kapag si district collector nag-order na ng forfeiture ng goods, ang remedy nyo po ay mag-file kayo ng appeal kay Commissioner of Customs through filing a notice of appeal. Nasa section 1126 mo yan ng CMPA. Kapag si commissioner nag-decide pa rin, in, uh, nag-decide siya for fitting your goods, ang remedy nyo na ho yan, Court of Tax Appeals, hanggang ubabot sa Supreme Court. Sir, paano po pa mag-deliver ng products sa importer? Wala ka naman pang in-order. Ano pong pwedeng gawin? Pwede kang humingi ng sample sa exporter mo. Okay? Sample lang. Or pwede picture lang, pwede description lang. Kaya nga sinabi natin kanina, pwede mo mag-submit ng sample, pwede ka mag-submit ng description, pwede ka mag-submit ng brochure or any other document that gives an information about your products. Okay? Ano po yung YouTube channel ko? Attorney Erwin C. Andaya LCB. Yan po yung YouTube channel ko. Okay? Oh, thank you, Rochelle, for sharing your for sharing my YouTube channel. Sir, possible po ba na lalabas sa CDP ang CAO 2-2020? Yung CAO 2-2020 is dispute settlement, di ba? Alam niyo ho, pwede ho siyang lumabas sa customs law, pwede, ho, pwede din po sa CDP. Why? Because yung CDP is customs documentation and practices. Meron ho procedures doon sa CAO 2-2020. So CAO 2-2020 may really may may be asked in C, in customs law pwede dun siya ma-ask sa CDP. Sir, may excise tax po ba sa coffee beans? I'll check on that, Jervina. Sorry but uh, yung specialization ko po is customs law. Yung excise tax po is tariff law and computation. But I'll but I'll check on it. I'll check on. It. Sir, in real cases, marami po bang nagfa-file ng advance ruling? As far as sa Cebu, ha, as far as sa Cebu is concerned, wala pa akong na, nabasa na nag-apply for advance ruling on valuation and rules of origin. But on classification, marami na. Marami na. Kasi almost every month, merong advance ruling na ini-issue si Tariff Commission. You can check on the website of the Tariff Commission. Sir, sorry, yung regarding po sa mga cases, may masasabi po kasi akong Republic of the Philippines. Ah, nababasa. Republic of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. Republic of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz and 2 by 20. Ah, okay. Etong tanong mo, Mark, parang nasa review to. Okay. Kapag may tatlong cases kasi ta, tayo. Criminal case, civil case, administrative case. I will not discuss ano yung difference nila kasi baka mas mahaba pa. Yung sagot ko, makulangan te ng oras. But yung, yung criminal case, makikita nyo yung kapag yung title ng case ay People of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. Okay? That is a criminal case. People of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. Kapag Juan de la Cruz versus Pedro de la Cruz, that is a civil case. Kapag pangalan ng tao versus pangalan ng tao, civil case yan. Kapag Republic of the Philippines versus shipment, that's an administrative case because that is the title of a that's a title of a seizure or forfeiture case. Okay? Bakit hindi pangalan ng tao? Bakit pangalan ng shipment? Because 
forfeiture proceedings are proceedings in rem. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya against a person. It is against the importation. Kaya pag makikita yung WSD, ang title niya, Republic of the Philippines versus 2 by 2 container said to contain so and so. Hindi siya versus importer because it is a forfeiture proceeding. It is a proceeding in rem. It is directed against the shipment, not against the importer. Okay? Kaya nga kapag may WSD, hindi po makukulong yung importer. Ang isisis lang po yung shipment kasi it's against the importation, not against the importer. Sir, agree ka ba na ang CMT ay parang babae kasi she is the law? Sa akin naman po, uh, depende. Depende ho yan. Kasi may mga bagay na masusunod yung lalaki, may mga bagay naman na nasusunod yung babae. So, it depends po on the situation. Okay? I think nasagot na ho natin yung mga tanong. Sir, do you have offers to enroll for customs brokers? Ah, tips. Okay, tips. Yung tips ko po para sa mga customs brokers na gustong mag-aral ng law, you invest in reading po. Um, ang, mag ang kagandahan po ng kurso natin sa customs administration ay immerse na ho tayo sa batas. Kasi ang pinag-aralan natin mula first year hanggang fourth year ang mag-review, batas ho yan. Diba? We have the CMTA, we have international law, we have international agreements, we even read cases. So, meron na ho tayong experience when it comes to reading the law. So, advantage na ho natin yan kapag gusto natin mag-aral ng law. Pangalawang tip, wala pong substitute sa pagbabasa. Kapag gusto niyo pong maging abogado, you really have to invest in reading because how will you know the law if you do not read? How will you know how will you know the case if you did not read the cases? Law school, sabi nga nila, law school is a jealous mistress. Okay? Kung meron na ho kayong asawa, yung law school po para ho yang kabit, yan yung term, mistress. Kasi nga you have to invest time. You cannot go to law school, you cannot go to class without reading your law books. You cannot go to class without reading your cases. Why? Kasi oral recitation yan. Tatawagin ka ng prof mo, tatanungin ka, what is article so and so? What is the definition of marriage? Kung hindi mo nabasa yung family code. Okay? So if you want to enroll in law school, you really have to read. And as a customs broker and as a lawyer, I really, really encourage you to enroll in law school. Okay? Sir, meron po bang loopholes ang CMTA? <clears throat> Um, meron na tayong mga mas maganda sanang provision sa batas. But of course, we are not lawmakers. Hindi naman po tayo congressman <coughs> or senator to, to say so. Okay? <coughs> but meron ho din mas ma hindi ho pa rin ho ma-improve yung CMT. Kasi batas ho yan. Evolving naman. The law must evolve in accordance with the demands of time. Okay? Hi, Justin. Okay, Justin, thank you for joining us. Justin Ho is the first placer in 2019. Tama ba ako, Justin? 2019 or 2021? Okay, CBLE 2021, I think. Okay, so Justin here is a product of University of Cebu, Lapu-Lapu, and Mandawe. Okay, <clears throat> tips po to pass the board examination. Read, read po. Read, read, and read. And then you follow a schedule. During the time that I took the board examination, meron po akong schedule, meron akong sinusunod na I have to wake up at this time, I have to eat breakfast at this time, I have to read at this time, meron din ho akong period to rest, matulog, okay? Magpahinga, and then basa ulit, tulog, pahinga, basa ulit. Nung naglo, nung nag-prepare po ako for bar exam, meron akong schedule din na sinusunod. Dinivide ko po yung yung months for my review to the various subjects. Diba ka, tayo sa customs, meron tayong apat na subjects. So you divide your time according to the four subjects. Kung ano yung subject na sa tingin nyo na medyo weak kayo, mas bigyan nyo ng mas mahabang oras yun para makope nyo yung inyo pong perceived na deficiency or weakness. Kapag yung subject naman na medyo considered yung strength nyo, then pwede na mas maikli yung time nyo doon. 
Okay? Basta magsunod, sunod, sumunod po kayo sa schedule. And then you give time for rest and recreation. You also give time for reading. Kasi hindi naman po pwedeng puro kayo read ng read ng read. Baka ho sa araw ng ng board exam, pagod na pagod kayo at wala kayong maisagot sa inyong board examination. So you still have to balance your time. Next po, study smart. Okay? Study smart. Read one material. Kung meron ho kayong reviewer, mas maganda isang reviewer. Kung meron ho kayong textbook on the CMT, mas maganda meron din kayong textbook. Basta focus on few materials. Huwag ho yung Basa ng isang libro, basa ng isa, isa ulit, basa na naman ng iba. Kasi you never know, natapos na yung panahon yung magbasa, ni isa, wala ho kayong natapos. You focus on one material. And then you look for good materials. Okay, good materials. And then, time to pray. Of course, always ask the guidance of the Lord Almighty. Kung sino man yung pinaniniwalaan yung mas makapangyarihan sa atin, then you ask guidance from that person. Kasi kahit anong gawin natin, kung hindi po kagustuhan ng nasa taas, hindi ho yan mangyayari. Okay? Sige. So, sabi ni Ninia dito, we'll have until 3.30. I think wala na hong tanong. Sir, advisable po bang reviewin yung mga lumalabas na online CBLE reviewer Uh, there's no harm naman po. There's no harm in in answering them. Basta focus lang ho kayo sa materials ninyo. Just focus on few materials. Hindi yun yung mar marami. So if you have one textbook on CMTA, that's good enough. If you have one reviewer, that's good enough. Kung nag-enroll kayo sa review center at meron silang mga materials, then you read also those materials. Meron din ho sa... Depende ho kasi yan sa, sa inyo. When I took the board examination, meron na akong schedule na hindi naman pareho sa review center. Diba? Sa review center, you meet every week, three times a week or every weekend. So, pwede ho na yung, schedule, yung subject nyo na this weekend, yun yung pag-aaralan nyo for the weekdays. Pwede din ho that you have your own schedule. So, depende ho yan kung ano yung applicable sa inyo. When I took the board exam, meron akong sarili kong schedule. Hindi ko sinunod yung schedule ng review center ko. Because I know which subjects are my strengths and I also know which subjects I may find them difficult. Okay? Sir, may bago po bang release yung book nyo? No, I st still the same edition, yung 2022 edition. Okay? Siguro maglalabas tayo ng bago after four years siguro kasi medyo wala namang pagbabago sa batas. Hindi naman, hindi naman tayo nagbago ng CMTA. Yung CMTA natin sa 2016, yun pa rin yung CMTA natin hanggang ngayon. Yung mga issuances ng CAO natin for the last years, ganun pa rin yung implementing CMOs and CAOs natin. If ever there's a change, siguro hindi ako magbabago ng aklat, but I will just I will just give lecture on these new CMOs or Customs Administrative Orders. Okay? Sir, ano po ba tips nyo sa pagre-review hangbang nag-work? If, if meron lang ho tayong opportunity, huwag ho kayong magtrabaho kung nagre-review kayo. Kasi you will only take this board exam once. Okay? So you give everything. Naniniwala ho ako sa kasabihan na if you want something you never have, you have to do something you've never done. So kung gusto nyo maging customs broker, Then give your all. Kasi mahirap naman ho na pagdating ng araw ay meron kayong regret kasi sasabihin nyo, kung nag-focus lang sana ako, kung hindi lang sana ako nagtrabaho, kung nag-full time review lang sana ako, papasa sana ako. Di ba? Mahirap po yung meron tayong regret. So kung kaya ho hindi tayo magtrabaho, focus lang ho muna tayo sa pag-aaral. Study for the board examination. Then after board examination, mag do na tayo. Maraming opportunities for us to work. Sa case ko naman, nung nag-review ako sa bar, ah, medyo nag-extend kasi yung bar examination. Supposedly, the bar was set in 2021. But na-extend siya so to 2022. Tapos nagtapos ako 2021. But I already was in the review years naman. So, medyo mas mahaba na yung mga 
panahon na nagre-review tayo. Ka, um, nagtatrabaho pa rin tayo, pero meron tayong sinusunod na schedule. So, during weekends, todo basa tayo. So, sa time ko kasi nung nag-aral ako for the bar, I was already working. And then I did not have the privilege to to resign. Okay? But I took some leaves. The four weeks prior to the bar exam, nag-leave na ako from work para mas makapag-focus ako doon sa bar examination. Okay? So kung kaya ho natin na hindi muna magtrabaho, focus on the on the board examination, mas maganda ho. Okay? Ah, uh, meron din ka aside from the CMTA and the reviewer ho, meron din tayong libro on customs proceedings. So ito po yung ginagamit natin for ito, ito yung sample. Ito, the handbook or ay, hindi lang makita, ito, handbook on customs proceedings. So if you're interested ho dito sa libro na to it will tackle the entire section uh, entire title 11 title 14 and the cases then feel free po to message our Facebook page po and we'll let you know on on this book okay so recently I shared in my Facebook page a case involving customs broker 2 minutes lang nina ha last na lang to um uh, Alam ho natin na yung prevailing law po, ah, yung prevailing case pala, I mean, yung prevailing case on customs brokers liability ay yung Remejillo versus Andigan Bayan, di ba? We've been discussing that, we've been talking about that. But very recently, 2022 siya, December, I think 2022 na decision, pero na lumabas lang siya sa Supreme Court website sometime May, kaya bago ho siyang kaso, yung Danilo Opiniano versus People of the Philippines. Nasa Facebook page ko po yun. If you want to know the case and the new ruling po when it comes to liability of customs brokers, feel free to message my Facebook page po. Kasi we never know. Baka matanong to sa susunod na board examination. Kasi yung Remejillo case is always asked every year po. Tinatanong ho yan sa CBLA. And who knows, the Opiniano case might be asked this November 2023. Or next year's CBLE. So please visit my Facebook page po so you would know what this case is all about. Okay? Sige, Nina. So what's next in the program? So again, thank you so much for your questions. Napakarami hong tanong ninyo. This is one of the webinars I conducted na napakaraming tanong. Kasi usually kapag nagdi-discuss ako, wala nang masyadong tanong. Okay, so thank you so much po. Thank you so much sa lahat po ng nagtatanong. Prof. Jim C., good afternoon, sir. Thank you for invite for having me po. Nina? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Attorney Andaya, for that wonderful and informative discussion. We are honored to have you as our speaker in this webinar. Also, we want to thank everyone's participation and most especially to our Honorable Speaker Attorney Erwin C. Andaya for giving us your time and the base of your knowledge to help us grow into successful customs brokers in the future. With that being said, we are awarding this certificate of appreciation as a token of gratitude. The following award is given to Attorney Erwin C. Andaya. This is to certify that he has dem demonstrated exceptional expertise and commendable dedication in sharing comprehensive knowledge on the subject of advanced ruling, customs valuation, tariff classification, and rules of origin, given on the 8th of July, 2023, signed by PSCAS PCU Manila President, Mr. Rui J. Paz, and PSCAS PCU Manila Advisor, Mr. Jim C. F. Nakawili, and the Sibaa Department Dean, Dr. Ariel Dizon Pineda. As we are nearing the end of our webinar, may I please call on the PSCAS PCU Manila Chapter Advisor, Mr. Jim T. F. Makawili, to give us the closing remarks. Okay, uh, uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, nagpapasalamat po ako kay Attorney Irene Daya for having uh, 
this uh, expertise na sharing for us no in preparations for our review for us to become a top notch air customs brokers everyone no i i mean not only pcu but uh, for the rest of the schools that uh, that we invited them no uh nagpapasalamat din po ako sa mga updates ni attorney you no know? thank you very much attorney wag kang magalala Siguro mga 268 na mga customs na magpa-follow up sa no regarding to sa sinasabi mong bagong case no kasi yung Remeheo versus uh, at commissioner parang sad-sad na tayo no. Okay. Uh, true enough no. Salamat po sa expertise na pinagay ni Sir Andaya and and true enough na ang ang uh, customs po ay ang uh, sabi nila ang course na never ending no. Kasi ito ay always updated, always uh, connected or influenced by global and local uh, laws, rules, and regulations. Kaya po napaka-challenging, no? napaka-sarap mag-aral. Walang katapusan. Kung, kung, kung di dahil sa course ng customs, hindi ko alam na parang ito ang course na hindi ako maboboring. No? Kaya with that said, no? thank you very much everyone. And marami pa kaming mga uh, seminar na ibibigay sa inyo for us to to ano to share no from PCU with love maraming maraming salamat po arigato po sa bye bye salamat po uh, thank you